Bilderberg 2017 is a historic year with the passing of David Rockefeller, who attended nearly every Bilderberg meeting in his lifetime, dead at 101 years of age, with Zbigniew Brzezinski following in his footsteps, passing away at 89 years, and basically with Henry Kissinger next. And while Henry Kissinger is attending this year's Bilderberg meeting, nobody knows how many years he has left, and all the real focus is on the up-and-coming power players who are especially constant concentrated in Silicon Valley and firms like Google and Facebook, the likes of Eric Schmidt, Peter Thiel, Alex Karp, and other data miners who are able to work with the entrenched establishment bankers. Now, the topics list is a boilerplate. They don't tell us what they're really going to say, and they're not going to release quotes or transcripts or videos sometime in the future. So this is all we get. But luckily, they do indicate some things. And the Trump administration is very much on the fore of their agenda. It's the first Bilderberg meeting while while Trump has been in office and it's been very much a wild card administration. There's been a lot of opposition, a lot of support, and a lot of moves towards future war. And there are a number of key figures attending the Bilderberg meeting from inside the Trump administration. And the most notable figure in attendance is none other than National Security Advisor H.R. McMaster, who himself was brought in after the ousting of General Michael Flynn, who was embattled over his Russian phone calls and his supposed links, and basically was sacked just days after getting into office. Now, H.R. was chosen to replace him, and he very much seems like an establishment creature, and he's very much a man who operates on calculated and studied military tactics. He selected a number of the top figures in Trump's cabinet. He's influenced people on the National Security Council, and he seems to answer to the power elite as they exist. Coincidentally, H.R. McMaster has just published an op-ed that he co-wrote with Goldman Sachs advisor Gary Cohn, who's also advising Trump, on what the meaning is of America first. According to McMaster, as well as Gary Cohn, who is now Trump's National Economic Council director, there is no global community, but there's an arena where nations and non-government actors as well as businesses compete for advantage. And it's hardly coincidental that H.R. McMaster is at the same time he's meeting in private with this group talking about escalating the Afghan war, talking about the possibility of future roles in war in the Middle East, there's the possibility of war in North Korea, and there's the general sense that the powers that be are looking for their entry into war. But H.R. McMaster himself is not the only figure of concern he brought with them the deputy assistant to the president for the National Security Council, a woman named Nadia Shadlo, who is also a participant at this year's Bilderberg, and she's the author of the recent book, War and Art of Governance. This is a book studying the role of 15 cases where the U.S. Army intervened abroad and gives a direct indication that the National Security Council and Shadlow personally, as well as McMaster, are there to sell Bilderberg on a future war. They're there to advise and strategically decide upon the future role of the U.S. based upon lessons learned from past interventions. They didn't bring her here because she's good at business or the new path they're going to take. They brought her here because she's advised the Department of Defense. In fact, General Mad Dog Mattis, who's now Secretary of Defense, reviewed the book and said it was a, quote, must read before we enter another war. Notably, there's also a gang of formers, especially people who are inside the Obama administration, John Brennan, who is notoriously the former CIA director, as well as pretty much the custodian of Obama's drone kill list, about who to take out on the kill list in foreign countries that were not formally at war with. And coincidentally, he just made the news in the last day or two as the individual who tipped off the FBI and prompted them to investigate the Trump administration ties to Russia, which has in turn now prompted a special prosecutor and so is Elaine Bunn, who's a former assistant secretary of defense and a RAND Corporation think tank writer who's written about DOD actions and the possibility of carrying out a major war. You've also got a former deputy national security advisor in attendance, Avril D. Haynes, also American, as well as former Homeland Security officer Monica Lisa and David S. Cohen, former deputy director of the CIA, all of which were Obama officials, and also notable 
example is David Petraeus, at one time a four-star general who was in charge of U.S. CENTCOM and later the former CIA director, and he left public office due to a scandal, but he's transitioned nicely into the private sector with KKR, the leveraged buyout firm, and he's very much inserted himself into global strategic power decisions, and it's just very difficult to separate him from military strategy and the potential for conflict and simply say, well, now he's only part of finance. And Petraeus is there with his partner and boss from KKR, Henry Kravis, who attends Bilderberg annually. These former and current U.S. officials join the elected officials, Senator Tom Cotton, Senator Lindsey Graham, and the governor of Virginia, Terrence McAuliffe. The first four months of Trump's presidency have brought indication after indication that war is desired by the powers that be and that it may well be pursued by President Trump, whether it's in this year or years to come or possibly not until the next term. But kind of a creepy point is that the founder of the Carlisle Group, which is a conspiracy into itself, is also in attendance, David M. Rubenstein. And back in the day, the Carlisle Group helped bring to power George H.W. Bush, and it's been a group that has been a power convergence for military industrial investors and for bankrolling the neocon agenda. And this guy is still around and still meeting with these notables. You've also got a number of think tanks and NGOs in attendance who all could also play an important role. There's Stephen Kotkin, who is a professor of history and international affairs at Princeton, who specializes in study of Russia. You've got members of the Brookings Institution all up in Bilderberg, and in particular, Leon Wasselter from the U.S. And that's the think tank that wrote Which Path to Persia, which talked about all the different ways they could start a war with Iran. They could start it with a false flag provocation. They could get Israel to do it. They could trick Iran into striking back against a provocation. They could use sanctions. They could use color revolutions and false revolutions using astroturf means of the ground. Uh, or they could tip a domino like Syria into a World War III scenario. All of these things have been considered and it looks like the possibilities are just being checked off the list until they find something that works. And as always, the president of the Carnegie Endowment for International Peace is in attendance, a major philanthropic foundation that, despite having peace in its name, has played a major role in the creation and propagation of the world wars of the past. You've got former World Bank presidents, including James D. Wolfenson and Robert Zolik there, and as always at Bilderberg, there's a major economic contingent as well, which could be meeting on the future moves of central banks, the growth of the economy, and the most notable again for 2017 comes from right inside Trump's cabinet with the Secretary of Commerce, Wilbur Ross. And he's something of a special case because Wilbur Ross's career centers around something like 23 years working for N.M. Rothschild and Company. He worked directly for the Rothschild banking family, which helped create Bilderberg. Wilbur Ross cut major deals. That's how he became the billionaire that he is. And back in the 80s, Wilbur Ross, as well as Carl Icahn, played a major role in saving Trump's career. He was in danger of going bankrupt, losing his casinos, everything was in jeopardy, and Wilbur Ross from Rothschild stepped in and cut a deal with his casino investors and saved Trump's namesake, his legacy, and his casino business. And clearly the favor has been returned. And so far in the Trump administration, Wilbur Ross has distinguished himself by echoing Trump's bizarre behavior and making jokes about it. Now when Trump met with the Chinese president, and he remarked on the beautiful piece of chocolate cake the most beautiful piece of chocolate cake that you've ever seen, and President Xi was enjoying it. And I was given the message from the generals, so the missiles were on the way. That he had just launched a missile strike on Syria, and Wilbur Ross had the wherewithal to joke that this was the quote, after dinner entertainment, ha ha ha. And apparently he made this joke to none other than the founder of the Carlisle Group, David N. Rubenstein, who is himself attending the Bilderberg meeting this year in 2017. So it's interesting that the ambassador to the U.S., from China is in attendance. 
And it's not a coincidence that just days before Wilbur Ross showed up at the Bilderberg meeting, he's also talked publicly in the press about how he's open to a mega trade deal with Europe, the TTIP. While they're publicly opposing NAFTA and talking about renegotiating it and downplaying the Trans-Pacific Partnership, they have very quietly been pushing for a major transatlantic trade deal that could be known as the Transatlantic Trade and Investment Partnership. And Wilbur Ross, and for that matter, President Trump, are in favor of it. And Wilbur Ross is also the leader of a Wall Street secret society, a group that their founding actually goes back to 1776, Kappa Beta Phi. And Wilbur Ross is the quote-unquote grand swipe, the head of this Wall Street secret society, which lets in a who's who of those who are involved in firms like Merrill Lynch and Goldman Sachs, but also involved in the Securities and Exchange Commission, the Federal Reserve, or other bodies that are supposed to be advisory. So Wilbur Ross is definitely someone to keep an eye on. And he's joined by Robert Rubin and Larry Summers, both of whom are Treasury secretaries and financial figures from the Clinton administration, who put into place the deregulation of derivatives, who helped to fuel the collapse that became the 2008 economic crisis. And despite their role in screwing over the world, they have only seen their power elevated. Now, Bilderberg has also brought to the table members of the SEIU and other important unions, as well as officers in charge of the TI. AA, putting pensions and unions and the future of the economy and the retirement of a large population all on the table. Also coming from the Trump administration is Christopher Liddell, assistant to the president and director of strategic initiatives. This is a newly created position that Trump created, and he brought in this figure who's actually not an American, but a New Zealand businessman, and he is steeped in American business. He was the CEO of General Motors. He was involved in Credit Suisse First Boston. He's been an investment banker with major investments and key to his whole operation. Christopher Liddell was also involved in Microsoft as its chief financial officer, and he based a foundation called the Next Foundation directed at strategic financial investment in New Zealand upon the financial model of the Bill and Melinda Gates Foundation of Microsoft, where they bring together corporate fortunes, they direct spending on social engineering initiatives, whether it be climate change or behavior patterns or what kind of education is going to be funding, etc. And as usual, they brought a who's who of European industrialists and politicians and media and journalists from both the U.S. and the EU. And on the technology front, you've got Peter Thiel, who is a founder of Facebook and PayPal and a number of companies on Silicon Valley. You've got Eric Schmidt of Google, which is now known as Alphabet. You've got Craig J. Mundy of Microsoft, as well as the other individuals individual who's been involved in Microsoft. You have the CEO and chairman of AT&T in attendance and other emerging online platforms, including the payment platform Stripe. And all of these guys are gaining in power. At least four of them are now on the steering committee. And these are the de facto leaders of the future of Bilderberg. Now that David Rockefeller and Jacob Rothschild and other senior conspiratorial figures are passing on, these are the people who have already picked up the torch and who may be defining what the future actually becomes. They have the power to decide upon the winners of what is seen and trafficked on the internet and what is ignored, what is not listed in search results, and what is blocked off from being monetized and funded and advertised online. This plays a huge role in the ongoing realignment of politics and media, especially inside the United States. Overall, finance, central banks, and the elite of the elite continue to dominate the direction of building but they're responding to world events and so it's no surprise that Russia and the international order, the Near East, which is better known as the Middle East, nu nuclear proliferation, meaning Iran and North Korea, as well as China, are all on the topics list and it just seems like the world could come unglued or it could pass the hot potato on. It's really difficult to tell what may come in the future, but so many of the 2017 attendees look ready to consider the very real possibilities for the future of war. How far will things really go? Is the system in the U.S. really going to try to bring down Trump? Or are these simply the people who really run the Trump administration? I don't think 
that Wilbur Ross, an old Trump friend, is here to undermine Trump. I think he speaks for who Trump really is and what he really represents. The selection of H.R. McMaster may be a deep state selection, but Trump and his supposedly populist streak is unlikely to unseat that power. He's much more likely to go along with it and continue the rhetoric about terrorism and intervention that was established in the Bush regimes and has been a mainstay of GOP politics for some time. You said that the U.S. should become a diminishing presence in NATO. Why? Absolutely. NATO is obsolete. Doesn't cover terrorism, okay? The money we spend is astronomical on NATO, okay? The NATO alliance has been the bulwark of international peace and security. The Secretary General and I had a productive discussion about what more NATO can do in the fight against terrorism. I complained about that a long time ago, and they made a change. And now they do fight terrorism. I said it was obsolete. It's no longer obsolete. A lot of people ask, is Bilderberg really important? Are they really the center of power? Well, we know that there's more secretive meetings. It's just that we don't know specifically where or when or specifically who's in attendance at the more secretive meetings. The Bilderberg meeting is a very important meeting and it represents a very important group of people. And if you study their membership list, especially going back to their founding days in the post-World War II era, you'll see the continuation of what was once the Nazi regime's IG Farben complex and the military industrial power base of Western Europe, the United States and Britain all converging year after year on some of the most important issues of the day. You will see leading industrial titans and very important political figures, whether they're behind the camera or in the public spotlight, and they meet together in secret and they discuss extremely pivotal and vital moments that could change world history. And they do change world history, and our knowing about them can likewise influence and change world history. So that's why it's worth knowing about. Bilderberg meeting while Trump has been in office, and it's been very much a wild card administration. There's been a lot of opposition, a lot of support, and a lot of moves towards future war. And there are a number of key figures attending the Bilderberg meeting from inside the Trump administration. And the most notable figure in attendance is none other than National Security Advisor H.R. McMaster, who himself was brought in after the ousting of General Michael Flynn, who was embattled over his Russian phone calls and his supposed links, and basically was sacked just days after getting into office. Now, H.R. was chosen to replace him, and he very much seems like an establishment creature, and he's very much a man who operates on calculated and studied military tactics. He selected a number of the top figures in Trump's cabinet. He's influenced people on the National Security Council, and he seems to answer to the power elite as they exist. Coincidentally, H.R. McMaster has just published an op-ed that he co-wrote Bilderberg 2017 is a historic year with the passing of David Rockefeller, who attended nearly every Bilderberg meeting in his lifetime, dead at 101 years of age, with Zbigniew Brzezinski following in his footsteps, passing away at 89 years, and basically with Henry Kissinger next. And while Henry Kissinger is attending this year's Bilderberg meeting, nobody knows how many years he has left, and all the real focus is on the up-and-coming power players who are especially constant concentrated in Silicon Valley and firms like Google and Facebook, the likes of Eric Schmidt, Peter Thiel, Alex Karp, and other data miners who are able to work with the entrenched establishment bankers. Now, the topics list is a boilerplate. They don't tell us what they're really going to say, and they're not going to release quotes or transcripts or videos sometime in the future. So this is all we get. But luckily, they do indicate some things. And the Trump administration is very much on the fore of their agenda. It's the first vote with Goldman Sachs. Sachs advisor Gary Cohn, who's also advising Trump, on what the meaning is of America first. According to McMaster, as well as Gary Cohn, who is now Trump's National Economic Council director, there is no global community, but there's an arena where nations and non-government actors, as well as businesses, compete for advantage. And it's hardly coincidental that H.R. McMaster is at the same time he's meeting in private with this group, talking about escalating the Afghan war 